I'm that guy from that f***ing band, and it is a million degrees. Hi, this is Max, and first of all, I gotta apologize for all the sweat, but it is incredibly hot here. It's the three days of the year uh, where it gets really hot in England, and uh, I'm filming a video smack dab in the middle of that, so apologies for all the shininess, and uh, yeah, you get the idea. Anyway, let's go. You hear this all the time, the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe is the best-selling valve amp in the world. Full disclosure, I haven't verified this claim because the available data is quite confusing and possibly misleading. Depending on where you look, it's the best-selling valve amp in the United States, or it's the best-selling valve amp over this or that specific period, or it's only FMIC's best-selling amp. Uh, that's not to say it isn't credible, because it is a ubiquitous amp. Um, I used to put on rock shows every week for three years, and even though most of these bands were some kind of metal or heavy rock acts, the amp I saw most often was... The Marshall DSL. Uh, I mean, come on, uh, this is the UK. But the, the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe w was a close second place. So why is it so popular? Uh, let's start with the obvious, the price. In the UK, you can get a brand new one for about £800 and used, you can pick one up for about four to £500 depending on its condition. Look at what you're getting for your money. This is an all valve 40 watt combo with a high quality 12 inch speaker in it. This one is a standard Mark 1, so it's got an eminent special design. All the subsequent models and special runs came with all kinds of different options. Um, always something very decent though. This is an amp you can gig with right out of the box. It's got a clean channel with a high gain and low gain input and lots of headroom. Uh, it's got a three band EQ with a presence control and a bright switch. Uh, it's got a foot switchable gain channel with a master volume and a more switch to really turn up the grip. On top of that, it's got an effects loop and an Accutronics spring reverb tank. It's got this classic black Tolex covering with a beautiful silver grill cloth uh, to make sure you stand out on stage. It comes with a foot switch and a nylon dust cover. Best of all, it says Fender on the front, and that's some solid value for money right there. If you look up user reviews for this amp, you'll see the term pedal platform used a lot. Uh, what does that mean exactly? In broad terms, it means that you can put your treble boost or your tube scream or your fuzz face in front of it, and your delays and reverbs in the effects loop, and it's going to behave more or less as expected. But frankly, pedal platform is a bit of a non-statement. This kind of mid-wattage valve combo should take pedals well, and doesn't really deserve extra credit for it. So for this demo, we're not going to be putting pedals into it, uh, for the simple reason that everyone's got different pedals. We're also not going to be attenuating it, even if it gets a bit loud in here. We're going to hear just the amp on its own. We've got a Bayer Dynamic TGX60 microphone, which has a slightly larger diaphragm than, for example, the SM57. Um, so I think it's a better fit for recording guitar amps that take up more space in the mix, or like in this case where it's the only source. Uh, that's going straight into the Mackie interface and then into Reaper. I'm going to balance the volume and post and the audio will have master bus compression, but other than that you're hearing a completely dry signal, no EQ, no track compression, nothing else. I'm going to use the Gibson with the Seymour Duncan Pearly Gate set because honestly if your amp doesn't sound good uh, with a Les Paul with PAFs, what are you even doing? So the hot rod has this headroomy clean channel with a bright switch and this spring reverb. So it can do that signature Fender chime, right? I mean, it sounds nice, for sure, but this is not blackface territory. Uh, 60 Fender amps are what people mean when they talk about Fender cleans. 
you have this spacious bottom end, a kind of scoopy mid range, and these airy crystalline highs. And when you push the amp, it doesn't really break up. The sound just gets bigger, uh, especially with the reverb in. I've tried everything to get the hot rod there, and I'm just not getting that at all. The best tone I could get is decent, but it's unremarkable, uh, and it doesn't change in character when you turn it up either, it just gets louder. The other issue is that the taper on the reverb pot is awful. Uh, the sweet spot is somewhere between 0 and 1, and then it's too much almost immediately. But then if you wanted to drown it in reverb, like a special effect, you can't actually push it that high. The most you can do is some kind of Quentin Tarantino type thing. <laughs> Okay then, so can you get a tweed sound instead? Uh, 50s era Fender's amps had no reverb and less headroom, and so we're known for this thick mid-rangey breakup when you got them cooking. The hot rod has too much headroom to get there with just clean channel master volume, but if you put a passive volume pot like this one in the effects loop, you can push the preamp into overdrive, so let's try that. I'll be honest, that's not good, folks. I've been tweaking this now for a good long while. It's not completely unusable, but put it this way, I used to own a hand-wired 59 Bassman reissue, and this is not even close. So obviously it's disappointing that for a Fender valve amp, the cleans don't seem to have much of that legendary Fender character. But that's not all the amp has to offer. I'm gonna go back to reviews here and cut to the chase by saying that the number one criticism of this amp is the gain channel, and it's not mild criticism either. I'm sorry to say that it's a fair point, so this gain channel feels like it's doing the opposite of what you want your amp to do when you push it into overdrive. You want it to compress, and you want it to sustain, but this feels like it's just choking out. You want the high end to get thick and smooth, this feels like it's getting brittle and fizzy. <laughs>
You want your bass to tighten up and get percussive, this is just rattling. <laughs> And just like with the reverb pot, you have this issue with the taper, so you've got too much gain far too soon, and then it never really goes anywhere. Uh, balancing between the gain and master volume changes the sound but doesn't really improve it. This clearly isn't an amp made for high gain, being a vintage style open backed 1x12 combo, and given that the bass sound is so unsatisfying, I don't really see how the more gain button is going to help, but we'll give it a try. <laughs> And yeah, it doesn't help. Uh, typically a gain boost like this one drops another valve and maybe a tone cap into the preamp circuit so you get more compression, more saturation, a bit of loudness scoop which is that smiley EQ curve. Um, but if your bass is already flubby and your treble already shrill, this won't be an improvement. It doesn't tame the sound so much as shroud it in more noise. In fact, that sums up the character of the gain stages in this amplifier. They don't saturate the sound itself, they kind of coat it in fizz. I've heard affordable solid state amplifiers that had a better gain sound than this. Okay, look, this is a Mark 1 hot rod, and Fender are now on Mark 4, so there have been three whole redesigns of the amp to get to the version you can buy in shops right now. There have been some improvements, but it's widely agreed that the Mark 2 was just as bad as this one, and the Mark 3 tweaked the clean sound but not the gain sound. The Mark 4 has been around for a couple of years now. I haven't played one personally, but Fender say it's improved note definition. Honestly, that's not much of a claim considering the sonic ground that needs to make up here. So why despite all this is it supposedly the best selling tube amp in the world, assuming that's true? But there's three reasons. One, Fender is a gigantic international company with massive, massive reach. Any serious guitar store anywhere will have a good selection of Fender guitars and amps, and one of those amps will be a Hot Rod Deluxe. If you're amp shopping, no matter what you're looking for, you're just gonna see one of these. People buy this amp the most because it's the most available amp. Two, at that key price point of a bit less than a grand, there are very few all valve amps as fully featured, on paper at least. You've got a choice of inputs, uh, three switchable gain stages, a reverb, an effects loop, a speaker out, all this in a very portable format. And it's a Fender. Three, the reality is that most guitar players, despite what you might think, are not tone-obsessed gear nerds like me. Most guitar players don't spend all their free time auditioning potential equipment to assemble their dream rig. Most guitar players just want a decent amp they won't have to worry about. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Cork sniffing be damned. Bonus reason number four is, I'm not an authority, and what you're seeing here is just my opinion. The consensus on specialty guitar forums may be that this amp should have sounded a lot better, but I'm sure there are thousands of guys out there who completely disagree. Uh, maybe even some for whom this is their very favourite amp. So this may be an unflattering review, and I do stand by it, uh, but it doesn't mean that when you're next in the market for an amp you shouldn't consider this one. My advice is, and always will be, that you should try before you buy. And that's where we're going to leave it. Please remember to do one of these, and also to do one of these, and I will catch you next time.